If I sit all the way back here, you can actually see what's on my t-shirt for a change. That's pretty cool. If you have an Android device and you can hold your hand up like that to start a video, like I can, my palmistry sign <laughs> keeps triggering my phone to start recording and I had no idea why until right now. Oh man, that's too funny. Anyway, friends! Hello! <laughs> Welcome back to Amethyst Craftworks. I am Samantha. And I am super excited to have you back here today. I have a kind of whip chit chat sort of video for you. I didn't really have anything planned specifically for this week's video, but I have a couple of things that I'm working on. And so let's chit chat about some yarn and some whips and all that good stuff. So first of all, hi, how are you? I hope you're doing well today. I'm doing really good. I've had a really awesome week this past seven days, and so I just kind of wanted to chit-chat about that first. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, this past week was my, my very dear friend Lauren's birthday, and I actually had the entire week off of work, which was so wonderful and very much needed. I didn't take the entire week specifically for anything in particular. Like I didn't go out of town. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything like that. It was very much a staycation, a stay at home vacation. But with the plague <laughs> a couple of weeks ago and I work from home, I am very lucky to be able to work from home. But since I was working from home, that means that the plague didn't really give me any kind of extra excuse to take time off, which means I had to work all the way through it. Very unfortunate. Um, but I got through it, and one of the reasons why was, was because I knew this, this last week was coming. This week of, of paid time off was coming. And so I had the opportunity to celebrate properly with my my friends for you know Lauren's birthday and she very much <laughs> enjoyed the blanket that I made for her um, that I showed off in last week's video she she really liked it and I was very very glad and you know we had several days in a row of like celebrating and dinner and you know gift opening and all that good stuff it was it was a great time but I also had the time off to just kind of do whatever, <laughs> whatever I felt like doing, which I gotta be honest, wasn't a lot. <laughs> I did most of what I have done this week has been cleaning, number one, because, you know, when you work full time, cleaning takes the back, 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 back burner, <laughs> right? Um, so I caught up on some, some chores around the house, and I did a lot of crocheting. And so that's what I want to talk about today, is the crochet part of my stay-at-home vacation. So, the first project here that I have to show you, it's, uh, maybe two-thirds of the way done? Maybe, maybe halfway done. Maybe we'll go with halfway done. Um... For Halloween this year, I'm going to be dressing up. Now, I don't know what our family's plans are for Halloween yet. No one, <laughs> no one but me is as excited for Halloween. And so no one is even thinking about Halloween, but I am. <laughs> okay, so just to, just to get that out of the way. So I don't know what we're doing, but I have mentioned here before, I have, I have a little... A little niece, two little nieces in my life. Um, there are a couple of other little kidlets and stuff in my life too. And so the older of the two nieces is two. So she will likely be trick-or-treating this year. But I don't know 
when that's happening, I think um, Halloween, unfortunately, falls on a day where I may be working on. If it's Monday, I will absolutely be working because I work Monday through Friday. Anyway, I digress here. So I'm not sure what we're actually doing for Halloween, but just in case, I wanted to make a costume. And not anything really complicated or anything super involved. I just wanted to have some kind of fun crocheted thing to wear this year. Um, last year I wore for Halloween, I gave out candy at my <laughs> my niece's my niece's house, and so I was wearing like a witch hat, and I had a tie dye sweatshirt on that had a big logo for the Sanderson sisters. You know, I was Halloween, but it wasn't anything that I had made myself. So this year, before I even show it to you, picture this in your head, okay? I've got the green hair. It's half blue but it's half green, right? Keep that in mind. I also mentioned last week, one of my favorite actors, maybe one of my favorite movies. And let's see if you can guess who, who I'm planning to dress up as for Halloween. Does the black and white stripe give it away at all? <laughs> Don't say his name three times. Yeah, it's Beetlejuice. <laughs> um, Beetlejuice is like, I mean, Beetlejuice is my spirit animal, first of all. <laughs> but I really love Beetlejuice, just in general. And I thought a cardigan in the black and white stripes would be a fun way to sort of make my costume without having to, like, sew. <laughs> because I, I can sew very rudimentary things. I can even hand sew very simple, <laughs> rudimentary things. But making an actual costume, making a striped, black and white striped blazer, I, don't, I think that's perhaps outside of my abilities. But crocheting one, absolutely. I can totally do that. And so this is the back panel for a Beetlejuice-inspired cardigan. It is very simple. Um, it's just rows of double crochet alternating in black and white stripes. I'm using, let me set it down here. I'm using, oh no, it fell. One sec. Gosh, you get a nice view of the top of my head, eh? <laughs> so I'm using Big Twist uh, classic. I almost said Big Twist Value because <laughs> I have used a lot of Big Twist Value in the last several months. But this one is um, Big Twist Classic. It is, again, a Joann's house brand yarn. And this one was last year. Joann's put Big Twist on sale for like, I think they were two for five or four for ten. It's the same price, but I think you had to buy both, buy two or buy four to get the deal. And it included these. Now this one is pretty floppy. I've used quite a bit of it here, um, but they are big skeins, big skeins of yarn. How many yards are in here? 644. So this one's probably about halfway, halfway done. And I had several of these. I had two black, two white. I even had, there's a purple one there. That's the uh, Big Twist classic these. And, you know, I had a lot of it because of said sale. I went kind of hard last year <laughs> buying them. And I used them last year to make my family and, like, my extended family hats. I made lots of hats, lots of beadies, lots of slouchy hats. I made some cowls, some figureless gloves. I made everyone <laughs> I could possibly think of to make a hat a hat. And so I had all these from last year 
and specifically the black and white, I had quite a bit left. And so I'm using these up in my Beetlejuice sweater. It's a nice yarn. It's considered a five weight. And again, I have mentioned I'm not the type of crocheter that is like able to look at a yarn and be like, yeah, that's a five weight. No, that's a three weight. I'm not that good yet. But I do know that this yarn is pretty thin for a five weight. It doesn't seem to me like it is a proper bulky five. So I've just been using it like it's a four weight. And the pattern that I'm using is not even a pattern. It's just me crocheting, essentially, out of my own brain. And I don't, it, I mean, I have, let's be real here, okay? I have watched many tutorials from many different YouTubers, many different makers, many different creators who have made cardigans and sweaters and, you know, all kinds of things. And all of the crochet items that I can do from my own head are kind of an amalgamation of all of those things, like all of those other tutorials that I have watched. So it's possible that there is a striped cardigan sweater tutorial out there. I can't off the top of my head think of one specifically because I just kind of chained chain chains until I was happy with the length and then just did back and forth rows of double crochet. So far I have the back panel done, I have one whole front panel done, and I have maybe a third of the other front panel done. And if you look at Beetlejuice, his suit actually has uh, pretty thick stripes. I thought I was kind of doing the lazy way with the stripes because, hold on, let me, let me pick it back up here. Because I decided to make them pretty big. And the reason I did them pretty big is because I didn't want to have to do <laughs> a million and one color changes to get this same width. Um, every five rows I changed color. So back and forth between black and white. And the stripes on his actual suit are pretty thick. They're not this thick. But they're thick. And so I think it works out pretty good. And in looking at Beetlejuice, his suit, the front and back panels are vertical stripes like this. But then the sleeves, around the sleeves, are thinner horizontal stripes. And so I think when I get to that point, I will likely sew the body of the sweater together and then just crochet in the round for the, the sleeves, just attach them right on instead of doing like another flat panel for the sleeve and attaching it and yada yada. So anyway, there is no pattern. It's just me kind of winging it. I also have a tendency to make cardigans really long. This one isn't, isn't super long. I try to be a little more conservative <laughs> with my measurements, but I am tall. I am six foot tall, so it does need to be quite long to fit me to my hips or so where I would like it to sit. I'm also a big girl, so it needs to be quite big to fit me around as well. And so, you know, it's just... It's just me doing it kind of made to measure. And so this is one project that I, I've been working on this week since I had the free time and the, you know, desire and the energy and all that stuff. So that's one. When it's finished, of course, I will show it off here. I'll show it to you <laughs> on, maybe on my myself here. Um, but the other, the other project that I've been working on, so... I don't know about you guys, but I'm not the type of maker that actually has, like, a whole list of whips on the go at any given time. I generally like to work on one thing until it's completed, and that's it. At most, I will have maybe one more complicated or more work-intensive project going, and then a simpler, easier one 
also at the most. So I'll have two. I'll have two going. And so one I will dedicate bigger blocks of time to on the weekends or after work. And then the other projects I'll work on 20 minutes on my lunch break or, you know, 15 minutes before I start my workday, that kind of thing. And so this other second project is one of those like easier projects. Now it is using the Hirschner's Worst to Date MVP Orange and Black Variegated Yarn that I got in the Halloween yarn haul that I showed off here a couple of weeks ago. And this one <clears throat> as well does not have a pattern. This is just me kind of winging it and you're probably like, well, what am I even looking at? <laughs> so it's actually, it's kind of like a basket currently. But I said in the video, I said in that video, in the yarn haul video, that I kind of plan on making home decor out of this yarn and the purple or amethyst and spring green super savers. The, um, both of those I got because they're not super soft. At least, I mean, super saver, once you wash it, it does soften up quite a bit. It may be true with this, this as well, but this one is also not the softest, like luxurious, like, oh, let's rub it all over ourselves kind of feeling. It may soften up too. That's okay. So my idea for both of those were like home decor items because they're not something that I would necessarily love to wear or like wrap myself up around. You get it. You get it. So I mentioned I was going to maybe make a pillow. And so that's what I started. And this is just like, I don't even know if I can show it properly. It's just one piece here. And these are the, the corners. And I've just been working like in the round. So round and round and round and round. No stopping, no starting. Like just one spiral around. And I don't even have like a pillow insert to go in here. I'm just going to stuff this with probably polyfill. I have quite a bit of polyfill <laughs> in my possession. I bought a huge bag of it last year to make my niece some uh, pillows. I made her a pillow and I made her some little stuffed, stuffed toys and things. And it took way less <laughs> polyfill than I actually bought. Seems to be a theme with me way over by. <laughs> but anyway, I have a lot of polyfill left over. So I'm just going to stuff this with polyfill. I will probably make it a square. I guess it's maybe, maybe nine or 10 inches or so wide currently. This yard, I love the way it's pooling. It's like kind of pooling, like where every stitch is a different color. I love it. And I think it'll make a great, a great, um, home decor thing, like a pillow. I, I think it's going to be great. And this pattern, again, is not like a pattern. Like, I can't link you to it <laughs> down below or anything because it doesn't exist. I have used this idea, and maybe you can see it a bit better, um, but again, like, I balled up what I had left of the um, worst to date. So this is the the remainder of the first ball. I still have a second one um, to use, so that will likely finish off the pillow and maybe I'll have some scraps left over for something else. But anyway, this that I'm about to show you. So this I made, the button came out, there we go. So I made this as a Nintendo Switch case. I have mentioned here before that I, I game, <laughs> I like to game. I have a Nintendo Switch and this just fits around it in um, pretty snug, a snug way, um, which is what I was wanting because, you know, if I'm traveling with my Nintendo Switch, I don't want it to bounce around in the uh, bag that I'm carrying it in. And so this, again, is like the same thing. Um, the yarn here was a scrap of parrot stripe. I think it was parrot stripe. 
um, from Red Heart. So Red Heart, Super Saver Stripes, Parrot Stripe. I think you can tell why I liked it. <laughs> it has the like, this is like almost a yellow green and then like a teal green, which kind of matches my hair color. <laughs> and then blue and purple, it's my colors. And so I made this and it's the same thing. It's like the same formula where it's just worked in the round. Like there's no, no seam down here and it's just worked in spirals around and around until it was big enough to hold my switch. And then I added a flap here, added a button and a, and a buttonhole. I did a pretty crappy job on the strap, but even so it has a strap. And so yeah, it's the same principle that I likely picked up from one or many tutorials across the, <laughs> the YouTube crochet community and just kind of adapted it. It's all made out of, si uh, uh, not single crochet, half double crochet. And yeah, this shape works pretty well for, oh, it's backwards, for bags <laughs> or for pillowcases. And so if you maybe have a pillow insert or like an ugly throw pillow that you want to make a, a cover for, it's a good idea. And I kind of wanted to know, would a very easy, like really like stupidly easy kind of tutorial be something that you guys would be interested in? I don't know if this is even like worth making a tutorial for because it's just so simple. And if you are a seasoned crocheter, then you likely know exactly how to make a, a basket slash bag slash pillowcase just like this without me having to tell you. But if you're a beginner, maybe, I don't, I don't know. It is certainly fun to do. And this is the kind of project that I like for a simple secondary whip where if I just have 10 minutes at the end of my lunch break, I got some time to kill. I can do a round or two and not have to think about it. Or if I'm super stressed at the end of a very long day, <laughs> which let's be real is a lot of my days. Um, it like is mindless. It's one stitch over and over. There's not even a stop or start. And so I can sit and watch my favorite things on, on TV or on YouTube to watch while I need to zone out. And I can just do it and, you know, half an hour later, suddenly there's like six worlds on, you know? <laughs> it's that kind of project. So would you be interested? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I don't know if it's worth it, but it is very simple. And if nothing else, I can at least um, explain how to do it if you're interested, if you don't want to see a tutorial video. Um, they're lots of fun and I can't wait to make more of them and just kind of dot my house with like Halloween in the living room and then purple and green in my bedroom or, you know, whatever. <laughs> they're really easy and yeah, like I said, I have a lot of polyfill to use, so why not use it for that? But that's really all that I have to talk about today. Like I said, I didn't have anything specific in mind. I just kind of wanted to come on here and chat at you and <laughs> all that good stuff. And so yeah, if you enjoyed, <laughs> leave me a like. I would really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because I would love to have you join us here. We are a fun group and we are getting bigger every day. And so if you want to join in, I would love to have you here. But if nothing else, I really appreciate your time and I really appreciate you spending that time with me here. You have no idea how much it means to me to have you join me for all of my, <laughs> my yarny babbling. And so I hope you're doing well and I hope you stay doing well until the next time I see ya. Goodbye.